Talk about how, you, how this whole thing got started. So, in 2012, on World Ocean Day, which is a few days ago, June 8th, and me and my son, we did a beach cleanup, and it was fun. There was a lot of people came from Oregon State University, and at the end of the event, it was a massive pile, and it was like, I can't really fit that in the back of my car. So... We left it there, and we went, and we had a friend, had a truck, we went back, and we loaded it up. But after that, it was like, well, it's like, son, what if we just did, like, 200 of these a year? Or what if we just did one every Saturday? So it all started with that. And and the funniest thing is I was working full-time and started getting emails and phone calls from college students. They're like, hey, we need help doing a beach cleanup, you know? And I was like, well, let's go do a beach cleanup. So they were like, well, we don't have any volunteers. We don't know who to reach out to. So... I emailed the same people from Oregon State University, and then they called, and they're like, oh, gosh, what do we do? There's so many people here. We don't know what to do. And I, we got on the phone. It was like Skype. And it was like, okay, grab a bag and do this, do that. You go pick up plastic and bring it back here. And that was kind of the conversation. Well, after that event, it was like, wow, this is fun. What if I continued doing this? You know, like, what if I keep emailing these students and getting sororities and fraternities to be doing this and the football team and the track team? And... So that's kind of where it all became. It's like it started becoming cleanups that I wasn't even at. And I was kind of emailing and helping and organizing these things. Well, and then the nonprofit, we started doing research with fungi in a stream and it hit world news. And the emails were overwhelming with questions and then donations came in. So I had to call the Secretary of State going, not a nonprofit, what do I do? And she said, well, send the money back or become a nonprofit. So I thought, you know, maybe I just do the nonprofit and it's kind of like um, a hobby, you know, and it'll be fun for the students and then we can get insured and and just continue helping the students do what they want to do. And that's kind of kind of how it started. And then it started branching out. People started emailing from like Florida and Texas and it was like, oh no, this is getting a little out of hand. I don't know if I can handle all this email and work. So and then, then today, like a decade later, it's still happening. So it's pretty cool. Wow, that's really that's really something. Yeah. You um your new directions, where where are you headed from here? Um, well we started using machinery. So um, the cleanups, there's about six thousand volunteers annually, which is great. Used to we would um, travel, we would go to California, we go to Washington, we go to Florida, and after at the end of the year when you look at the fuel you use it's kind of like it doesn't really make up for what we're doing and so we scratched our head we all of our board members got to we just had to think about it. it's like we can't tell them no because they want us there and they need us there to speak or to show them what to do and and so it was kind of like well but if I travel 14 hours and it costs five thousand dollars, they donated five. The nonprofit didn't benefit, and the environment didn't benefit. So it was like we're still scratching our head. And I'm like, you know, let's just get some machines and let's let them do cleanups, and we'll get the permits. And we don't go there, but we can speak maybe through an iPhone. Well, how are you doing? The same thing. And I don't drive 14 hours. And the biggest thing with driving. Not only was it a lot of fuel for the environment and all that, no matter what car you have, I was itching the whole way because there's these beautiful pressing beaches that I want to pull over. And I would get sidetracked picking stuff up. And then it was like really hard. So I'd have to leave like two weeks early <laughs> because there's all these beaches I have to work on, you know. And so now I'm mainly machinery. So in Oregon, we're here from like May until November. And then we go to Hawaii and... It's kind of in-house. We have employees that will be doing stuff now. But the beach cleanups never went. And it's just, we don't have to fly or drive and be all over the U.S. And you can't be everywhere at one time. So it took me a while to figure that out. Because if you asked me to do it, I didn't want to say no. And how do you tell someone, no, I can't come there. You just go and you get it going. But out of all that, I thought it was a waste of fuel bath for the environment. But at the same time, that's how all the chapters actually took place. So now if, if a chapter is not doing as well, so the next place would be North Carolina, New Jersey, 